What's going on everybody? Kyle here and I'm out here with my wash truck Medusa and today we are doing a beautiful driveway. You can see how nasty this thing is. It's absolutely gnarly. Uh, black organic growth all over it. We have a lot of brick work we're going to do for this customer. All of their stairs on their front porch area. We're going to do some sidewalks. Um, we're going to wrap around the side of the house to the entryway for their garage. And then we're also going to do some stairs on the back side of the house that are absolutely covered in organic growth. It's like full blown moss back there. So you're going to see what a really hot mix could do when it comes to neutralizing that organic growth and really help helping to pre-treat this concrete. And that's going to aid you in being able to move at a faster rate with your surface cleaner. Uh, I want to talk about surface cleaner because I see so much bad information out there whenever it comes to flat work. So one of the biggest questions I get, I get calls all the time. Why am I getting lines whenever I'm washing concrete? Okay, and I just hear all types of bad information. So today we're gonna talk about it, all right? So I'll show you guys the job right here, the scope of today's work, and I'll do a little bit of footage for you guys. Uh, not much, because I have to stay on, on schedule, but whenever we're finished washing today, I'll show you the end result free of lines, and then we'll talk about it whenever I get back to the shop today, certain things you could do to mitigate having lines in, in the concrete. So let's take a look at this work right here. All right, so we have a beautiful home here, beautiful manicured yard. So we're gonna be really careful that we don't burn up any grass. It's a cooler day today, so we're good. And we've had some rain, but you could just see how black this area is right here. It's been a long time since they washed this driveway. We also have some tannin stains in the back because of leaves falling on the concrete and stuff like that. But it's just your standard wraparound driveway. Beautiful lake over there. But let's check these stairs out. You can see how bad they are. They're just in the shade a lot and there's always moisture and stuff like that. Rainwater coming down these stairs. So lots of organic growth. Gonna move this mat and this furniture right here, but more of the same, just a lot of black bricks. Customer's gonna be very happy with the end result. You can just see more of the same, guys. I just got done taking pictures because this is a great opportunity for before and after pictures for marketing. So if you have jobs that are really dirty like this make sure you take the time to get those pictures before you start washing there's been so many times in my experience where i finished a job and i'm like shoot i forgot to take the pictures so awesome rose garden right here you can tell they've been deadheading these roses how big they're getting and stuff like that it looks awesome All right, let me walk around right here. So I've already talked to the customer today. She's inside, she wanted to get out of my way, that way I could get to work. So just a lot of concrete, not a lot, but Nice amount of concrete for a residential home, but you can see the organic staining. So this is gonna make for great pictures. Got a bunch of these flower petals coming down here. So we're gonna clean all of this up for them, but check out these stairs right here. Just the amount of growth. We're gonna take care of these stairs all the way to the top and we're gonna take care of the inner walls too. You can see right there how bad it is on that back wall. All right, first things first, everybody. I'm gonna lay down a pre-treatment and this is a big uh, debate. People debate about all the time whether you need a pre-treatment or not. On really dirty driveways like this, I always pre-treat and I do it with a pretty hot mix too. I do that for a number of reasons. Most importantly, it's gonna go ahead and start getting to work on the organic growth. So 
we're gonna lay down, I'm probably gonna lay down like 4% onto the concrete and let it start going to work on those organics. And that's gonna help me move a little bit quicker with my surface cleaner. I have several surface cleaners on this rig. Got a 28 inch big guy right here. I have a 24 inch ground force. I have a 20 inch BE whirl away. So I'm gonna grab the 24 inch, you know, it's gonna make really quick work of this. And I'm gonna lay down my pre-treatment with my soft wash system. So I utilize a gas soft wash system. People call them a gas roof pump. If, if you're familiar with that term, I like AR45, that's my favorite pump. Heard great things about Comet too, but on jobs like this where it's large, large pieces of concrete, this is where you wanna have like big boy soft wash equipment. So I'm all for 12 volts, I think they're great. But whenever you step up to more professional grade equipment, this is where it really shines because it's gonna take me no time to, to lay down a pre-treatment on all of this concrete, all of the stairs, and all of the uh, stairs in the back. I could probably do it, no shit, probably do it twice as fast as a 12 volt pump. So that's where you get your money's worth whenever you spend a little bit more, you get a lot more performance and a lot more capability. So let me get to that. I just walked back over here and I wanted to show you some video of these stairs that I pre-treated. A lot of the black's already coming off the wall without even having to do pressure. You can look at some of this organic growth back here, all of this moss, it's slowly turning white. So we're killing this stuff off guys. It's already getting neutralized. It's gonna make our life a lot easier. And uh, there's a lot of trees back here. I just blew all of the leaves out of here before I started doing my uh, treatment. and. You can already see leaves are falling and stuff like that. So that's gonna be a constant struggle today, but that's why you bring a leaf blower. So let me get back to it. Now it's time for some moderate pressure, fellas. We're gonna start removing all of this moss. It's gonna be really easy because the bleach has already started working on it and it's releasing from the stone. So just a little bit of moderate pressure is gonna clean out all of the black that's in the grout that you see, as well as all of the moss that's growing on these stairs back here. Now that our concrete is pre-treated, we're gonna get to work with our surface cleaner. So the biggest thing is 
Don't go too fast. That's one of the biggest mistakes that people make, and that's going to create lines, and you're not going to have a good finished product. We'll talk more about surface cleaning later in the video. Step four, come back and cut in areas that you may have missed with your surface cleaner. And you can see how dirty this concrete still is. We just worked our way around from the back of the house, and this driveway looks absolutely beautiful. It looks brand new right here, and we haven't even pre-treated there ain't even any lines in there and stuff like that that goes to show you if you do things the right way, you're not gonna have all these headaches at the end of a job. But let me come up here, show you guys what we're gonna do. Pro tip, always start at the high ground. So we're gonna go up here. We've already pre-treated earlier the stairs. We're gonna pressure wash the steps to get the rest of this uh, grime off of these bricks. Then all that dirty stuff is gonna run down. You know it's gonna take the path of least resistance. So. Then we're gonna go ahead after we do the stairs, then we will finish pressure washing and taking all this down, downhill. And we will do the same on this side, guys. So I spent a little bit of time, a little bit more time than I thought at the back of the house doing some filming. So the pre-treatment has already dried. That's okay, you do not have to come back and pre-treat again. You've already done your stuff. It's already working on all of these organics. All you have to do is wet the concrete you never really want to be running a surface cleaner on dry concrete can you yes but go ahead and wet it down because wetting down the surface is going to make a night and day difference when it comes to how efficient you could be because of the speed at which you could clean so let me get to it to wrap we're about 80 percent done i just finished up with the surface cleaner and i used my wand to uh, rinse out the driveway get all of that dirt and grime that was on top of the surface rinse that out clean and now i've just stretched out some hose we're gonna start doing our pre-treatment or i'm sorry our post treatment but let me spin this camera around so you guys could see look how clean everything looks and what do we not see? Lines, all right? I see so many times, time, time and time again, on other people's work, other people's before and after pictures, and I get hundreds of questions and dozens of calls every month. This is like the, one of the most popular questions. How do I wash a driveway without getting stripes? So if you have the right machine, you have the right tips, and you have good flow, and you do a good post-treatment, and I'm sorry, pre-treatment and post-treatment, you won't have lines. We haven't even done the post-treatment yet. And look, looks great. So we're still gonna lay down a post-treatment. That way we can get it as clean as we can. We don't wanna just clean the surface. We wanna get down as deep as we can into the concrete. It's porous on the surface. So that sodium hypochlorite is gonna get in there and do its thing. We're also gonna respray down the bricks where we washed, but just night and day. This is gonna make for some really good before and after pictures. Here we go. Looks brand new. Lastly, after we put down our post treatment 
And if you're wondering, I'm probably gonna spray like a 3%. So that's a good, it's, it's not lava like I would spray on a roof, like 5% or something like that. But it's enough to get in there and really clean the concrete. People ask all the time, can you just post treat and leave? And uh, I recommend that everybody rinses afterwards. You know, you never know if they're gonna let dogs out of the house or if they have kids inside. The last thing you want is a kid coming out here barefoot and walking through puddles of sodium hypochlorite. So I rinse everything down. And that also allows me to wet any uh, foliage in the area, any plants or flowers and stuff like that. She has an awesome rose garden on the opposite side of the house. So there is overspray when you're spraying on concrete and stuff like that. It mists up and it's in the air. So just coming back and rinsing the concrete with clean water and rinsing any plants that are, that are in the area, you're gonna have a happier customer. So do the right thing. I know it looks great, but don't just uh, roll up your hose reels and get out of there. Treat it like it's your own house. And uh, we will be out of here in the next 15 minutes. All right, guys, one last thing I almost forgot, and it's the last and final step before you leave. I use a leaf blower, guys. This is a Husqvarna right here. I prefer steel, but my last one went out and I had to get this Husky right here, but you could work your butt off for a couple hours and do everything right. But if you don't come back and it's the little tiny details that customers really pay attention to. Um, if some areas don't have good runoff or you saw back in the back where there's a lot of like trees with flowers, I've cleaned everything, but the trees are like, there's all types of flowers on the ground and stuff like that. It will literally take me about three or four minutes with this leaf blower to go around the whole property, any areas that didn't have good drainage and, and you're rinsing the concrete and stuff like that. And a little bit of dirt comes out of the, uh, the mulch beds and stuff. You could blow it right back into the mulch beds with this, because if you just keep spraying it, more water is just going to flush out more dirt and mulch. So this, you could blow all the dirt back into the mulch beds. You could blow any flowers out of the way that are on the concrete. And overall, you're going to have a much better looking project whenever the customer comes outside to pay you. So don't skip this step if you don't have this little pro tip for you. Last thing I'm going to do is get payment from the customer. And then I'll pull out of this neighborhood and we'll talk about either outside of the neighborhood or back at the shop. We'll talk about all the equipment used today, just so we could go a little bit more in depth about why I choose the equipment I have. And uh, that will be a wrap. Let's do it. All right, everybody, we're back at the shop now. So now let's deep dive into why so many people are getting lines whenever they're pressure washing. First and foremost, one of the biggest issues, I talked about this a little bit earlier in the video, is people moving their surface cleaner too fast. By all means, if you have a huge machine, like a big machine like I got, and you have a massive surface cleaner and tons of flow, you could definitely afford to move your surface cleaner faster, a lot faster than the average Joe. But for a lot of you guys, it just, it just comes down to slowing down. You need to slow down whenever you're surface cleaning because you're trying to go too fast. And whenever you get done and you rinse that driveway off, sure enough, you're gonna have a lot of lines. So slow down. The other thing that creates lines is overlap, right? Which is fine. It's just like mowing grass. You're going to overla overlap a little bit, 
But what you're seeing for a lot of you guys is where you've inadvertently, you know, because of the surface cleaner tips, a certain area has been cleaned more or had high pressure on it longer than other areas. So you're going to naturally, you're going to see those lines. So that could be avoided by what we talked about in the video, pre and post treatment. So make sure you're doing your pre-treatment, make sure you're doing your post-treatment. All right. Can you get away with it without doing a pre-treatment? Absolutely. I always still recommend wetting down the driveway first, but I always pre-treat, right? I, I wash every day. So I know what I'm talking about. I could wash circles around a lot of people that are out there training courses and doing all types of other stuff online. And I know what I'm talking about. Do your pre-treatment. Today, I wasn't really concerned with the grass. We had a lot of rain and it was a cold morning. We just had a cold snap. So wasn't as concerned with the grass, but if you guys do go hot, make sure you wet down the grass and stuff like that. That way you don't have the uh, the chance of browning it up and killing grass and stuff like that. But lay down a hot mix, let it start going to work. And then after you pressure wash that driveway, make sure you do your post treatment. Like we talked about, the driveway is porous. You got to get that chemical down there because we're not just cleaning the surface of the concrete. We want to get down deep. That way that driveway stays cleaner a lot longer. Another thing I want to talk about is the surface cleaner. And we'll, we'll go around and we'll talk about all of the equipment used. But one of the biggest issues people have is they don't have the right surface cleaner for their pressure washer. And I see this all too often with new guys. People get this is a low barrier to entry business. So all types of people get into this business with some piece of shit pressure washer from Lowe's. And then they buy some big ass surface cleaner because they, they're like, oh, I want a big surface cleaner. I want to get this driveway done quick. And let's face it, your pressure washer don't have enough ass behind it. It doesn't have enough volume to push this surface cleaner. So a good rule of thumb is four inches per gallon of minute for your machine. So if you had a like an entry level machine, like a professional grade machine, but an entry level machine, like four gallons a minute, let's just do the math. Four times four, four, eight, 12, 16. So a four gallon a minute machine is ideally going to be paired well with a 16 inch surface cleaner. This isn't the golden rule. You know, you could definitely go plus or minus with your surface cleaner. A lot of that comes into play whenever you adjust your tip sizes. So I'm not going to touch base on tip sizes on this video. Contact whoever you buy your equipment from, your surface cleaners, your tips, and make sure that you have the proper tips for your surface cleaner. But a good rule of thumb is four inches of surface cleaner per gallon a minute of your machine, all right? So if you had an eight gallon a minute machine, 30, you could push a 32 inch surface cleaner, plus or minus, depending on your tips. So one last thing in regards to tips, just like we talked about having the correct size tip, it's also very important that you have fresh tips, all right? So in the spring and summertime for my surface cleaners, I'm swapping my tips out every four weeks. All right, and that might go that might be plus or minus depending on how many driveway washes I have, but on across the board every 4 weeks I'm swapping my tips. When I slow down closer to winter time, I'm still swapping them out every 2 months. So, how many of you, let's just be real, how many of you right now are watching and you got into this industry like a year ago and you ain't changed your tips one time? Uh, probably a bunch of people. So hit, hit the thumbs up button if that's you. Swap your tips out. Have a bag of extras in your truck. I cannot stress to you enough how quickly these tips wear out. And also, a lot of people are having clog tips. And that could also lead to striping and circles and stuff like that in, in the driveway whenever you're finished. So take care of your equipment. Swap it out frequently. I think that's a, a lot of the big reasons why you guys are having lines and seeing lines in your concrete. So I hope this video helped. Let's talk a little bit about the equipment I used. And I'm getting off of here. All right, so like I previously said in the video, this is a Whisper Wash 24-inch ground force. Great surface cleaner right here. I think Whisper Wash makes the best surface cleaners in the industry. I love how this one has casters on it. Definitely makes it easy to go side to side when I'm washing or if I'm turning around and stuff like that, it makes it super easy. Um, I actually prefer using this one to the big guy that I have on the truck. So this is my favorite surface cleaner. This is also a great option right here, more of like an introduction level surface cleaner. I use this with my five and a half gallon a minute machine as a backup, but this is a BE Whirl Away. So it's a lot cheaper, but I would definitely recommend spend a little bit more money, get a professional grade surface cleaner. Whenever you're doing surface cleaning, you transition a lot, guys. So I'm always swapping between uh, a trigger gun 
and a surface cleaner. Trigger gun, surface cleaner. If you don't want to constantly have to turn off your pressure washer to transition between your surface cleaner and your trigger gun, ensure that you buy one of these high pressure ball valves. This is a must have piece of equipment, guys. I'm talking to the new guys. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know what this is, but this valve right here, this high pressure valve, you could just turn it off and that's gonna stop the flow to your surface cleaner. And then you could safely transition to your trigger gun or vice versa. If you were running the gun, you could transition to your surface cleaner without turning your machine off and without having to depressurize your system. So definitely a must have. Another thing is a must have guys, beside your trigger gun is running a lance. Right here I have a M5 twist, but I have, a J, I have several J rods I use too, but this is not a long lance. This is definitely a smaller lance, but still a must have guys, especially when it comes to rinsing off the driveway. In the summertime, I do a lot more rinsing and I do it more frequently because the last thing you want is all that dirt and grime that's brought to the surface from your surface cleaner drying back into that porous concrete. So you want to frequently rinse off your driveway as you're working your way down the concrete. But this saves your back having a lance and stuff like that. So you're not having to con constantly bend over with just a trigger gun or just a ball valve when you're rinsing. So pro tip, get yourself a lance. It's a must have. Another reason why I use a lance every day is every single day I'm washing bricks, guys. So whether it's the front steps to someone's house or it's at a commercial setting and stuff like that. A lance is going to create distance between you and the surface you're washing. It's going to greatly reduce the amount of splashback that you have, and it's also going to increase your safety because you're farther away from any debris that is going to be flying off like broken brick or mortar and stuff like that coming back and hitting you in the face. So I have several different size lances for def different applications. So Definitely invest in several of those. Go to your pressure washing store and pick up a couple different lengths for yourself. All right, next up is the pressure washer. This is the workhorse of any pressure washing rig right here. It's what you're going to use day in, day out. The one that I used in the video is an IGX 800. This is definitely a big machine. It's tied to an 11 gallon per minute pump. So high flow like we talked about. PSI is important, but what's more important is gallon per minute volume so this is a high volume machine right here that really helps me out i couldn't wash without something like this because i'm doing bigger and bigger jobs commercial and even on just big residential jobs like that it makes your day so easy when you have the right equipment for the job this might be overkill for somebody um if you if you're just getting into the industry and you're starting a company or, or you're just doing this on the side and stuff like that this is a great option right here i recommend for anybody that's trying to run a company, the smallest you want to go with is a five and a half gallon a minute machine. So this is an IGX 630 right here, five and a half gallons a minute. So this is a great machine. If you're just getting into it, entry level right here, it's going to set you up right. But if you're really trying to go after it and go hard and, and you're planning on doing a lot of washing, a lot of house washes, a lot of driveways, um, I always recommend people at least get an eight gallon a minute machine. If you don't, you're going to be kicking yourself in the ass. Eight gallon minutes, the way to go. I, I know there's some uh, restrictions, you know, if you have, uh, maybe you don't have room for a big buffer tank or something like that. Maybe this is, this is the way to go for you, but just know that you're going to not have the same capabilities and performance as something big like eight gallon a minute or something like this when it comes to pressure washing and house washes. You can see I'm running all Hondas guys. Um, there's a lot of manufacturers out there that, that, you know, have machines that people are tying pumps to for pressure washers. But on my rigs, I'm only going to put Hondas on the rig, guys. They're tried and true. I've just had bad experience with other machines. So Honda last. Honda is reliable. That's why I go this route. This is the soft wash system we talked about earlier. Stay tuned. We got another video coming on the AR45. Why I think it's the most ideal, most professional soft wash system you could have when it comes to performance and capabilities. This thing can't be touched like something like this or a Comet. So video coming on that. If you're looking into getting a soft wash system, I think gas roof pumps definitely the way to go, the way of the future. All right, y'all, that's a wrap. If you enjoyed the content, please give the video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel get these videos out there to people like you that just want some help. There's so much garbage, trash information out there, and there's so many people 
that are just trying to take advantage of new people in the industry. I'm just out here trying to help people. I want to pay it forward. I want to get good information out there in the industry. So help spread this video by giving it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, don't miss out on new content. Make sure you hit subscribe and then make sure you hit that notification bell because we got a lot more videos coming out and you don't want to miss out on those videos. We've just recently switched the channel from my name, Kyle McGuire, to Softwash TV. I got a lot of video ideas and a lot of things planned to create content. So we got a lot of content coming. I'm just super motivated. I got a lot more ideas and footage coming out for you guys. Takes a lot of energy, but I'm doing it for y'all. So I will talk to y'all later. But to celebrate rebranding the channel, I want to do a lot of giveaways on the channel. Let's do a, I'll do a giveaway for a brand new uh, stretch of high pressure gray non-marking hose. I'll even throw the quick connects in there for you. So all you have to do is leave a comment on the video. I always leave this at the end of the video. That way the, the true supporters can get in on the giveaway, but leave a comment and we'll let it run for two weeks and I'll put it in the randomizer. If it's, if it lands on 20, I'll go down to the 20th comment and that's the winner. If it lands on 10, I'll go down to the 10th comment and if that's the winner, I'll ship you out a brand new stretch of high pressure hose with brand new stainless steel quick connects. That's what my way of giving back to y'all. So y'all take care. I will talk to you later. Peace.